Okay, welcome back. And now we're on to our fifth presentation for uh, Yuma Waka Room. So our fifth pre presenter is uh, Ken Golding. Ken is a principal at Sasaki, an international recognized multidisciplinary design firm. Trained in architecture and planning, Ken has dedicated his career to finding the most pertinent applications of technology to planning and design, and he remains actively involved in inventing, prototyping, and using new tools and approaches. Ken will be talking about Paint the Map. Uh, Ken, over to you. Thank you, Anneli, and thanks everyone um, who's able to join this session, as well as to Phosphor G for hosting this great conference. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about uh, Paint the Map, which is just a really simple uh, way to engage with uh, basically raster GIS. Um, so it's a um, pretty simple concept. It's really just a, a painting tool um, on top of a kind of slippy map stack. Um, and so, you know, the, the basics of the painting tool just being kind of uh, drawing tools, uh, tools to uh, fill and, and arrays, and then, you know, um, uh, the uh, hopefully everyone's familiar with the very widely available um, kind of slippy maps like Leaflet, uh, which essentially let you zoom in and out uh, anywhere on the planet. Um, and so, yep, the 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 tool uh, looks like this. Basically, um, you uh, you know you have a color palette. You can choose different different colors, which mean uh, you know can be assigned to different types of uses, um, and uh, you know, then you're able to just uh, zoom in to maps and, 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 and paint them and kind of get uh, area takeoffs from them. Um, and so, uh, you know, just as Anneli was, was saying, you know, I'm uh, with uh, Sasaki, we're, we're a design firm. Um, and so we're always looking for ways to make it much, much easier to kind of in, engage with uh, geospatial. Um, and I think there are a lot of users out there who are kind of in a similar boat where, you know, you just want to be able to uh, interface uh, with geospatial data uh, very simply and quickly, but at the same time, um, you, you know, you want to have a some level of, of, of input. And so we found both for kind of um, end users as well as uh, designers, it's very helpful, and especially now that more people have, have tablet devices um, uh, where they're able to, um, you know, draw in pretty high, high fidelity and quickly, um, these kinds of drawing tools can be, can be valuable. So, the first use case I was going to just um, jump into, um, uh, and this this is this is a a site where we actually had um, a number of kind of existing resources that we wanted to maintain on 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 the site, um, and all the data is actually kind of um, uh, is kind of faked here, so it's not even falling on the site correctly, just because some of this this information could be sensitive. Um, but basically, uh, you know, we were looking to develop a site with some active oil rigs. And wanted to make sure that uh, we were maintaining certain levels of production, and so um, I'll just jump over to the um, kind of live version of this map. And so, effectively, you know, we could be um, either looking at setting the um, oil rigs we we're going to keep based on the total production that they they are able to produce, um, but we also want to kind of think about design. And so, the use case here is simply that you know we can start to designate areas and. The oil rigs aren't quite falling on the site because they're obscured a little bit. But uh, you know, the idea is I can kind of just paint an area, and now what it's doing is it's actually overriding my selections there in terms of which ones I'm going to uh, force to include, which ones I'm going to force to exclude. So I intentionally made that a little bit messy, but this is where they're you know kind of painting and filling, and so it's a very very easy way for people to just kind of. Uh, engage and start to draw and but actually connecting that to data and, and and dashboards. Um, and so, you know, the basic features there, as I was showing, I was kind of drawing things. And um, so that's just drawing a shape. And then control click was filling it, but you can also use the full tool to make that clearer. Um, and then there's also, of course, an eraser tool. Um, and so, you know, the, the idea is to be able to combine this with obviously other, other tools. This one's fairly simple, kind of. Um, Essentially, point in polygon, although it's it's kind of raster, so it's just looking at which points fall within each of these kind of raster images. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to kind of highlight here is that um, while we're drawing, we're also kind of taking advantage of the the slippy map um, kind of uh, 
character to be able to actually kind of draw globally. Um, here's another example. Um, and this is a uh, tool we're calling Common Conscience. We're actually looking to launch um, the next iteration of this uh, next week. But what this allows designers to do is, is kind of come into this tool, again, you know, drawing some of their kind of polygons, working very broadly, particularly in the early stages of, of design, but starting already to understand uh, different impacts in terms of embodied carbon, um, as well as other metrics that we can start to overlay on, on top of this. But it's all based on, on area takeoffs. So as people draw uh, with these, these different uses, they're then able to assign exactly what those uses are in terms of the kind of material palettes and then be getting takeoffs in terms of what's the total cost of that, what's the total um, embodied carbon, which is actually shown as kind of a range here, just based on some choices they, they're making. So it's kind of embodied carbon, sequestered carbon, and then stored carbon is down here off the screen. Um, so that's kind of an exciting use case. And in, 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 that, um, in that tool, we're gonna have three modes. One mode would just be like pure calculation mode. They're not drawing anything necessarily. They're just plugging in numbers. One where they can draw directly in the tool more like this in an iframe. And then the other mode where they can basically just get a URL to and a QR code to open up on the tablet. They can draw on the tablet and they can see the results coming to that, that tool. Um, so yeah, the basic the basic tools here are just you know, the marker tool. We're just painting pixels. One, one thing to um, kind of point out here is that all the pixels that we're painting have to be pure colors. So we can't be doing any smoothing or anti-aliasing. Um, and uh, you know, this is also, Zoom, um, zoom dependent, so that you know the, the kind of brush gets more detailed as you zoom in and want to do more kind of detailed work. Um, there's uh, obviously the eraser tool, uh, which just takes things away, and then the paint bucket for filling closed areas, which works with marker and pretty much uh, with eraser. And then the pan tool is just like the standard slipping map behavior. Um, and then a couple of useful shortcuts: shift click will draw straight line segments, um, and control click will will fill. And then spacebar lets you kind of um, pan quickly. So you know it's all about just being able to draw things really quickly and get quick takeoffs. Um, but one thing I wanted to kind of um, just help make sure that everyone kind of understands in terms of how slippy maps work. So if you just imagine, um, you know, you're dealing with a map window. So if, this, if you imagine this is the browser, um, and then when we're loading those slippy map tiles in here. Um, where it's always like a, like a window that's kind of falling on that set of tiles. And so if I pan this down here, you know, we're starting to pick up a new set of tiles. And actually these would be loaded on demand as I'm kind of panning down. And if I you know, pan wherever I zoom in, zoom out, it's always just kind of managing those tiles and loading them on demand. Um, so, you know, same thing when, when you zoom in. So if you imagine I just zoomed in from, you know, into this B3 here, I'm then getting four new tiles. And that's another important thing just to kind of bear in mind is that we're always subdividing those tiles by four. Um, and so what's happening with, with Paint the Map? And so it's really this relationship between a sketch canvas and then um, the slippy map tiles. Um, and as I'm drawing something with on that sketch canvas, like if I've just painted this yellow, it's gonna then transfer that onto all the tiles um, that I just covered when I was doing that paint operation. So it's tr doing that transfer down and to the to those tiles just very directly below. Um, and then what else what else is happening is it's also um, transferring them to lower zoom tiles. So basically, you know, as far out as, as we want to go. And then also, um, you know, the other thing that's happening here is that every time I do a, a pan or a zoom or anything like that, um, I'm actually kind of redrawing this this canvas. So while you're panning and zooming, the canvas actually kind of gets hidden the moment you release this paint is getting transferred back on there. And that includes everything that we've kind of um, was showing before. And then I'm also kind of marking up, well, these are new tiles that have kind of come in and I painted something previously here. Yeah, so that also has to get, get rendered now um, onto that, that canvas. So it's all about this relationship between the canvas, which is kind of in screen space and you can draw on, and then the slippy tile map that's kind of happening beneath that. Um, and then just another thing uh, I wanted to point out is that we can draw at um, you know pretty much any any zoom level, and then um, it it always stores the tiles at the at the greatest zoom level. So here I've said max zoom is eighteen, for example. Um, the tiles actually getting saved here. All of the um, takeoffs are, are getting getting pulled out of this, um, and uh, yeah. So basically, you know, it's it's both um, rendering those kind of up 
up the slippy mat tree as well as down to kind of the, the lowest level. And this is something which can get a little expensive in terms of, um, you know, it just the numbers get big pretty quickly. Um, and so just to kind of show um, what that's looking like uh, in terms of, you know, when, when you're drawing something at this kind of uh, Zoom 17, for example, and this one I exaggerated, actually went to Zoom 19. So you can see we're starting to get jaggy lines. Um, you know, it's obviously something you don't, you don't want to, um, to allow too many zoom levels for that reason, and then also just in terms of the amount of tiles it, it kind of takes to render them. Um, but you know, what's nice about this is you can you can draw things roughly, and then you can kind of come into a greater zoom level and, and clean them up and kind of refine them. And then just to get a sense of, of how those those numbers, you know, this is one of the the challenges I was mentioning, just in terms of if you're drawing at zoom level 17, as you kind of go to zoom 18 or zoom 19 or zoom 20, um, the number of pixels is drawn and the number of you know, pixels on the entire screen get pretty big pretty quickly. Um, and this is all just using browser-based rendering. So, um, you know, we found that four zoom levels is is pretty, is already starting to get pretty heavy. I don't think I'd ever go to five. Um, typically, I'll use three zoom levels. So if you, um, if your, um, your smaller size is, is, is zoom 17 that you're allowed to draw at, you can go above that in terms of viewing it. Um, you know, then it'll be trans transferred to Zoom 19, and it's you know um, you're already at at kind of a um, million pixels per per tile that it's kind of having to manage. So uh, the way we do that is we just kind of show the user this message: please zoom in. If you're going to start drawing, they can um, zoom out and still see it. Um, and then the other challenge is you know just measuring things. Um, obviously, with Mercator projection, uh, the size of each pixel is um, and the actual area of each pixel is kind of changing as as, as you move away from the equator. Um, for most of our use cases, at that kind of zoom level I was showing, it, it, it's been fine to just use the midpoint in each in each tile. We we'll get pretty accurate results from that. Uh, but we could also do something where we calculate, you know, um, what the ratio needs to be for each row and pass that in if, if there need to be more accuracy. Um, so I was going to just quickly go over and give a demo of of this tool. Um, so if we imagine uh, this is in Boston right now, and say we you know, wanted to develop something on this, um, this island here, which would be very unpopular, but you know, we kind of just come in here and draw something there and measure it. And immediately I'm kind of getting um, you know, acres kind of shown there. Um, and so uh, as I was saying, you know, uh, we can continue to zoom in. We'll, you, know, you can start to see it's getting a little bit jaggy there. Um, could come in and kind of continue drawing at this scale, kind of using that fill tool. Um, and then, uh, you know, as, as we zoom out, that's still going to be visible um, up to whatever my min zoom is, or like the uh, out zoom parameter that I set. Um, but, you know, the, the interesting thing about this is it really is kind of a, a global uh, canvas. So, um, you know, if we were to, um, you know, come down down here um, in uh, Umawaka kind of area, for example, if I could find that, um, you know, so we could come in here and kind of just continue drawing with, with different areas and everything will be kind of calculated based on where you are on the planet. So it's a very, very simple drawing tool, but it also has this, um, you know, ability to really span the globe and, and manage like different different levels of, of detail. Um, yeah, so the, uh, you know, the, the repo is available here. I wanted to quickly just um, open up some, some code and uh, kind of just show you some of, some of the basics. It's, um, it's certainly not um, the most kind of thorough platform or anything, but it is pretty easy to stand one of these up and then kind of connect to some of the, the key methods. So, um, Going to just switch to code mode here. Hopefully, everyone can kind of see this. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the, you know, the, we just have this this options file as part of as part of this repo. We kind of have this painted uh, paint tool example here, and so that's what I'll I'll be showing. Um, and then, you know, just showing how we can change some things. So, if I wanted to, for example, have it start in um, in Humawaka, we can just kind of replace that. Um, if we wanted to change the 
Um, the min and max zoom, we're just kind of changing those here. Um, and the, I guess the, the, the main other uh, things that we'll kind of pay attention to, um, there are those palette options. And so, you know, maybe we'd want to make these instead of just um, a random color one, color two, let's say we're, we're looking at um, like flood, maybe we wanted users to like report on flooding or something, which is one, one thing we've actually used for in the past. So maybe we call this flooded building and this one we could call flooded um, the road, for example, etc. And so when we run that, um, you know, you'll see that those changes have been applied. Okay, that's coming through. So now, you know, we're starting in, in Homoaka and we can kind of come in here um, and maybe some of these are on the floodplain. And so people could report that these flood, for example, and we could immediately get the areas that, you know, maybe this is like some flooded flooding people saw on roads. Um, and right now I'm just kind of using that shift click to kind of draw that road, um, et cetera. Um, so it's pretty pretty easy to kind of configure it. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to point out in, in the code there is, you know, uh, but presumably you want to be able to do something with that data. Right now it's just doing a console log on the pixels counted, but this is where you would connect it to some other system like a, like a dashboard or something. Um, and then another kind of helpful thing here is, you know, um, in the US, we tend to use acres. Um, so, you, you know, you could just have uh, different area displays kind of supported there. But that's the gist of it. It's pretty, pretty simple um, uh, from, you know, at least options configuration. Definitely a little more complex uh, if you want to get into some of, some of the other code. But for a basic setup, it's, it's certainly pretty straightforward. Um, and I just included, uh, you know, the, those kind of key key values here. Um, the one one thing that's kind of worth uh, pointing out here, this is um, there's a difference between min zoom and out zoom. So the min zoom is that minimum value that you want to be able to paint at. Um, and again, that you know you kind of want to set that as probably no more than three or four different from the max zoom, uh, just because of what I was saying in terms of those um, numbers getting big quickly. Uh, whereas the art zoom, that's you know you can set that um, to something much smaller. That whatever you would want to be able to zoom out to and still be able to see that that paint tile. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much um, everything I was going to show on, on that front. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you know please uh, take a look at the paint map repo and yeah connect by GitHub issues if you have use cases or ideas or if you kind of run into anything with with the tool itself. Um, just a quick shout, shout out to my team at Sasaki, Eric, Raj, Kai, uh, Chris. And then if you want to contact me, there's a bit of contact information. Hopefully you, you're able to see on the link. Um, and then also just include at the bottom here um, some links to the, the other presentations that I gave at Fox4G. And that's that. So I'd love to field any questions. Yes, we have. Thank you, Ken, for the presentation. Yeah, we have a couple of questions here. So yeah, let's start. First one is, how are the painted tiles saved? In what format and are they permanent? Very good question. Um, yeah, so um, the, I can just go over quickly to uh, this. Um, the way that's implemented right now is we just have to we just have an endpoint for kind of uh, serializing those uh, when the user hits save, um, and so it's right now it's just it's just everything saved as uh, PNG data format, but um, as like MIME sixty four encoding within uh, JSON data, so it's just a JSON package, and it tends to be fairly manageable because these are all flat areas of color, um, even though it's PNG data, um, it actually they end up being reasonably small. Um, uh, Jason files from this part. Thank you. And moving on, since we have a lot of questions, yeah, yeah. can you save or export the drawing to send it, for example, to WMS for processing? Yeah, that's that's a great question. There's, there's no um, kind of support for um, for 
exporting to to other formats at the moment, but that that's absolutely it. Um, basically, once we have this data in JSON form, and essentially it's just raster tile data, um, we could have ways of converting that into into other systems or kind of saving them as as tiles for WMS or or, um, or other kinds of inputs. So yeah, um, that's that's not not something we've built currently, but it wouldn't be very hard to add that. Great. So another one is there a public demo to try this to paint the map? Um, that is a, a good question. I, I don't think I have it on a public URL, um, but I could easily set one up. I, I, I can get one added to the, the repo. Great. And then another question, can you use this with other web mapping libraries and map box? Uh, yes. So sorry, I should mention this is actually, um, I have map box there. We're using it for certain things, but the actual, um, uh, map that you're seeing is built with leaflet. Um, and um, not not currently, it's not set up for, for other other libraries. Um, but um, yeah, I mean the, the, the basic techniques could be could be copied to, to other libraries. We're not we're not doing a, a lot that's kind of specific to, to any uh, slipping map library. Great. And then another question, is there a API support to get the painted area information? Yeah, so um, right now it's just a hook, um, which is we're just hooking into that on on pixels counted, I think was the was was the method. And that just has all the information that's kind of coming through to that paint palette right now. Um, and so that's what you would hook into some other dashboard or tool or something. Great. Uh, and then last one, what was your motivation in developing Paint the Map? Uh, that's a really good question. Yeah. So the, the motivation was just to have a much easier uh, kind of input that's not, um, not vector-based. There are a lot of great tools for kind of drawing polygons and that kind of thing. Uh, What's more difficult when you're drawing polygons is kind of making sure that all of your areas across your site or whatever add up to 100%, that you're not getting any overlaps or things are drawn. You know, if you're drawing a lake with an island with a lake in it, for example, it's quite hard to do that with vectors. You have to make sure that they kind of, each one's being taken out of, out of the other or if there's, there's overlaps. And so it was a nice way to just make sure that uh, in a very, very simple interface, uh, we were always representing the landscape areas as you know adding up to 100%. And so as you draw something with pixels, of course, you're kind of taking away the other pixels. Um, and so, the, uh, yeah, the main motivation was was just to have a, a very simple way for people to uh, to start to um, in, engage with um, geospatial information. But that's as simple as just using like you know a basic paint tool. Yes, great. So I think you answered uh, all of the questions, but maybe just one more for me. Yeah. I think you already mentioned, you know, uh, some, there are some recommendations what could be for the next uh, paint the map uh, features. But yeah, what, what mm -hmm. else do you think uh, uh, are you going to, you know, as an improvement for paint the map? That's, yeah, that, that's a great question. So that, you know, um, the first, uh, well, we, we're going to be integrating this with um, the tool I was talking about, which is that um, embodied carbon tool, carbon conscience. Um, and so, um, yeah, that, that that that's kind of the 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 the, the, the next step on that. Um, in terms of of features, um, it's um, you know I don't think we, we we're trying to take it uh, too much further. Feature-wise, we kind of want to keep it really simple. Um, in you know, uh, I think uh, if we if we are going to put a lot of, lot more time into it, it would be actually on kind of uh, refactoring some of the code. Um, this is all built on on jQuery um, and JavaScript, and you know, our kind of main stack these days is more on the TypeScript React side of of, of things. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we may be looking to do a a refactor of it. Um, I think, yeah, in terms of, of um, other features, it's, it's more building things around this in terms of other, other kinds of dashboards and other kinds of uh, interactions. Um, and then, you know, potentially cleaning up some of the, the UI UX, um, which needs a little bit of work still. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for all the answers from, for the questions. Is there yeah. anything you want to uh, share with the audience before we close? 
Uh, no, I think, th thanks for all those, those great uh, questions. I mean, I think, um, uh, yeah, this has uh, been really great uh, platform, uh, Phosphor-G, um, and uh, my first time presenting here. Um, so it would be great to, um, if anyone, anyone's really interested in using this, to, to connect. Um, and yeah, I think, it, you know, um, the only other thing I'd, I'd kind of mention is, you know, uh, another area that we might take this further um, is I gave a presentation on, um, on data tiles earlier. Um, and I think there's just some really interesting use cases that we haven't been able to explore yet where, um, you know, effectively taking um, very simple um, paint-based uh, inputs like this and then combining it with, with data tiles in a way that, you know, so you could, um, for example, when I was drawing those, those areas, we could be looking at, like, who's the actual population of that area I just drew that was, was flooded, um, if you have, like, accurate population data, or what, what are the soil conditions, or, you know. So marrying this with um, widely available data tiles would kind of be an amazing um, uh, place to get to. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. I think that's, yeah, that's part of the, the larger vision for this. Yes, thank you so much, Ken, and thank you as well for our uh, audiences for your wonderful questions. Yeah. And yeah, we'll be back in four minutes for our last presentation for today. Thank, thank you so you. much, Anneli. Sure.